I wrote the MCAT about four years ago now. And when I wrote it, first of all, I studied for it like a crazy person. It was every single day, six days a week. Gave it my heart and my soul for that summer. It was my full-time job. But then when I got my score back, I got at the time the 95th percentile and I was so happy with it. I felt like it was such a huge accomplishment and it was, it was one of the reasons why I ended up getting into medical school. But then I made a video talking about my study schedule and how I studied to achieve that score. And that's been viewed more than 50,000 times at this point. But it was only about a year ago where I had my first student reach out to me and let me know that in modifying my schedule and doing some of their own things, they were able to achieve a perfect score on the MCAT. That's a 528. And then since then, I talked to two other students that also got a 528, which is just this crazy score. And today we're going to talk about how they did it. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca and I am a first year family medicine resident. And here on the channel, we are well on our way to 15,000 subscribers, which is amazing. And if you want to help out, please feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. If you have any questions about anything that we talk about in whatever video, put a comment down and I'll get back to you. Now, before I give you the actual tips, just to quickly piece out how special a score of 528 really is. Just know that the way the MCAT is scored, for those of you who haven't looked at it before, it is basically a scaled score that you receive. And a score of 528 represents the 100th percentile, but so few people make it to a score of 528 that the 100th percentile is actually shared between the scores of 524 to 528. That means that starting at 524, so few people get there, that is the 100th percentile. So we could just imagine how few people get to the 528. And at first, when the first person reached out to me, didn't actually believe that it was possible to get a 528. I had someone message me before with a 526, but for the first one, he was actually nice enough to send me his score breakdown, the different charts to prove that he got a 528. And I stopped asking questions about his score and started asking questions about how he achieved it. And then since then, the two other people as well. And that's gonna take us now to our first tip and, and how you were able to get one of these top scores from these top test takers. So from the people that were sharing their study schedule with me, one of the things that I noticed in talking to them was that there is often a discussion about what's better for the MCAT. Do you wanna study for a year part-time and work full-time as well? In the meantime, and just drag it out over that year? Or would you rather concentrate it all into a organized block and take it very planned out in a step-by-step -step and know exactly what you need to do? And in speaking to these three people, they told me that they all studied for it in a block fashion for the most part. There was a component of this dedicated review in addition to some of them also told me that they were reading up throughout the year, but they set aside about two and a half to four months, depending on the person, um, for just dedicated full-time, no job, multiple hours a day, and really trying to focus on making that their only priority. Now that is going to be the first tip and it's a sentiment that I've shared on this channel in the past and the majority of my friends, even those who just got a really high score, 95th percentile and above, all of us for the most part did include that dedicated study block. I myself wrote the MCAT two times. One time I tried to do it while working full time and studying on the weekends and after work and stuff like that. And the problem with that is that the MCAT just has so much content that if you are not consistently every single day trying to drill it into your head, while keeping organized and having a checklist to make sure that you know what you have and what you haven't studied and what you still need to know, it becomes very, very hard to remember all those crucial details. So I think that when you are looking at something, you're trying to get the 90th percentile or above or one of these really top scores, your best bet is going to be to set aside a dedicated study schedule, whether that means putting your job on pause or whatever it is, everyone's situation is different. It's not to say that it's impossible to do it over a 12 month study period or a two year study period or whatever you've done. I just think this is the highest probability chance if you set aside a dedicated study schedule. Now, the majority of the students also emphasize the importance of taking breaks, regular breaks during your study period, whether that's making sure that you're done studying after a certain time every single day, or taking a whole day off or multiple days off per week, whatever works best for you. I just thought I'd have to include, and I'm not gonna put names because they requested not to be named in the video, but one of the students I was talking to said that he really enjoyed playing Pokemon Silver after his study sessions and on weekends and taking a day just to fully de-stress and Pokemon or Halo is what I played when I was studying on the weekends, you know, if you're into video games, if you're not, go for hikes or whatever. 
but I think that is very, very important in trying to de-stress and keeping your arousal, keeping your anxiety about the exam at that perfect level that pushes you to learn more, but doesn't weigh you down and hold you back. Now, the second tip from these perfect test scorers are that the importance of practice questions, practice passages, practice full length tests, that's really the most important thing when it comes to helping you learn and then reinforcing your knowledge. It is not enough just to read through the book and highlight and go through passages over and over again. It's really the MCAT needs to be put in a special light in terms of how they ask their questions. The MCAT asks questions very different for the majority of students than what you're used to in university, the way they phrase certain questions, the way they use certain keywords. And it is only by being exposed to that type of questioning over and over again that you could really become proficient in it. And a lot of high scoring test takers, myself and my friends and these students included, will say that there is a point that you get to where you could almost only read the first half of the question and you know which way the question's going because you've done hundreds, if not thousands of practice questions. And it's when you get to that point, when you are speaking the MCAT language, that it really opens up to you and becomes a much more usable, understandable test that you could interact with. Now, in terms of what practice questions or practice banks to use, there are free ones and there's also ones that you have to pay for. Whether you go for an MCAT prep company like the Princeton Review or any of the other big names out there, or if you go with the route of UWorld or MEM from Kevin Jabal, he's actually a really nice guy. I had talked to him just a few months ago actually. And Different students tell me that they like different things. So I would say, you know, try whichever one works best for you. I think that the consensus among students right now is that UWorld really is the top of the top when it comes to consistency in their MCAT practice passages and which ones people find are the most similar. I myself use the Princeton Review and the practice questions and their practice exams that came with my study books, but at the same time, I also didn't get a perfect score. So mileage will vary. I think find the one that works best for you. And I think in addition to the passages, I've said this before hundreds of times, you need to do those full length, the eight hour full MCATs if you're really chasing that top score. Recreate the test conditions, make sure you're in an environment where you put your headphones in, um, the noise canceling ones, and make sure that you are writing it like this is the actual MCAT. And you're going to do this consistently. You're gonna work it into your schedule. And then the last thing that the students had shared with me was that the value of having a study group is actually very important if you're chasing one of the top scores and having a group of people that you get along with reasonably well but that are all writing in and around the same time and the importance of having that group is number one to push you to keep studying and have a group of peers that you could bounce ideas off of but more importantly it's about having people that you could talk to and figure out what you don't know yet because everyone will have been studying from a variety of different resources. And I remember in my case, it was very likely when I was studying with my group that I would read something in the Princeton Review and then someone else would read something from exam crackers and we'd come down and talk about it. And they'd tell me something and I'd be like, wow, I've, I've never heard of that before. And the MCAT is so vast in what they're testing you on. There's so much stuff on there that in order to get a top score, you really have to just cut out all uncertainty. And the best way of doing that is with talking to people in some sort of collaborative environment and figuring out what you don't know, what hasn't been covered so that you could write it down and go ahead and cover it yourself. And then the best part about all of this from what the students told me in my own experience is that then after you get to teach other people what you learned. And it's really only in teaching things that you figure out exactly how well you know it. Because it's very, it's very common in, in my experience for you to think that you know something and then someone asks you to explain it to them and you try and then they hit you with a, yeah, that doesn't make sense. I'm, I'm not getting it. And then you realize that your understanding of it is actually a lot more shaky than you thought. And when it comes to dialing down and making sure that you know it fully for that exam, teaching is the final step, right? You have learn, do, teach in that order. And we apply that to our residency training as well. But that is the final tip that everyone they wanted to share. So I know there are a lot of people studying for the MCAT this summer and your testing might be coming up very, very soon. I just wanted to wish everyone the, the best of luck and just know that I did want to bring these people on the channel. I wanted to interview someone so that they could share these tips with you themselves. I just think it's very, or from what they told me, it's very intimidating at some point to speak on camera. So if you are another student that did get a 528 and you are willing to sit down and have an interview and, and actually share your tips in a, like a camera discussion, put that in the comment section below. You can reach out to me via email because um, I, I think that it's very important to share these tips with these high test scores because unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you're looking at it, 
the MCAT is still one of the best predictors of whether or not you're going to get into medical school. And that's just the way that it is. These videos are meant to try and help other people. Um, so guys, thank you so much for, for watching. Best of luck, seriously, to everyone studying because I know that the summer that you write your MCAT sucks. I did it twice myself and both summers were not, you know, not incredibly fun. <laughs> but uh, thanks so much for stopping by. Everyone have a good day.